Now we can see things way, way further. It's some wonderful work being done by Nathan Oakley and some UK teams where they're actually seeing a horizon behind oil platforms at 10, 15. Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley, and in this video we're going to be looking at a discussion between Red Pill Philosophy and Mitchell from Australia, which originally went out on the Paul on the Plane podcast. There is a slide at the end of the video, so you can go and take a look at the full-length version. Now, in this snippet, they're discussing the Black Swan, so we'll get along to the actual interview after I've done a few shout-outs to my Patreons, first and foremost, my channel members, which are growing nicely, and all of my subscribers. So a little bit of an update in regards to Nathan Oakley 1980, which has just hit 17,000 subscribers, and Nathan Oakley channel, which is my second channel, subscribe today, link below, uh, which has just hit 5,000 subscribers with a million and a half views. Also the main channel, Nathan Oakley 1980, has hit 4 million views, all in about the same sort of space of time. So this is in no short thanks to, definitely to Mark Sargent and Eddie Bravo, who both gave me shout outs. So I've grown a thousand subscribers in the last 28 days, which is a huge number for me, such a small channel. So a massive shout out of appreciation to all of you who've just subscribed, all of you who are Patreons and channel members. As I say, thank you to Eddie Bravo and Mark Sargent once again. This next clip, as I say, will come from the Paul on the Plane podcast and is a discussion between Red Pill Philosophy and Mitchell from Australia. They're discussing the current infiltration of the weaponized Black Swan and the Modus Tollens argument. So big shout out to them. Links to both of them will be below. All right, so the Black Swan. So for anybody who's not aware, which you probably, most people who are listening right now have probably heard of the Black Swan, but basically it's a uh, long distance observation. Some guy was standing on a shoreline looking out over the water um, and the uh, camera's about one foot off the, the ground. And uh, so the geometric horizon, the curve of the earth, the, the leading edge of the geometric horizon of the earth they say we live on uh, is about one mile away, a little about, about a one mile away. Uh, the problem is you can see two large oil platforms. One's about six miles, the other's about seven, mi uh, nine miles away. And then the even more <laughs> unsettling part for the globs is that beyond the two oil platforms, there's a horizon line. And the horizon, that's, you know, you know, who knows how far that is, but we know it's further than the nine miles of the furthest oil platform because the horizon is clearly behind it. So it's sort of a question of, well, if the physical leading edge curve of the globe geometric model is only a mile away, but there's a second horizon visible over nine miles away, then where are they get, where are they getting this second horizon from? And the official response from the globs has really been all over the place. You know, usually they got their their answers in order, but this time they're kind of all over the place. Some say that's it's not a horizon you're seeing; it's some it's some island in the background. Others are saying it is the horizon, but you know, it's an apparent horizon. So if it's so, of course, my question is, well, is it what kind of apparent horizon? You mean like like perspective, like the flat earthers have been <laughs> saying the horizon is for the last you know freaking 10 years that yeah, the horizon that, is just the vanishing line of, of, of human vision that's our argument welcome to flat earth <laughs> exactly so but, okay so it was then i'm like okay is it a perspective horizon or is it or is it just a refracted horizon like is it just like but again if it's refracted because that's what some have said they they've said that and it doesn't seem like they're saying it's a perspective-induced horizon. Horizon. It, it just looks like they're saying it's refracted from further around the globe. But that makes no sense because the, the the geometric horizon that they claim blocks ships and lighthouses and all types of other things, that is observer-dependent. That's why when you change your height, the observer height, 
you can they claim that you could that the, the horizon gets further away and that as a consequence you could also see further around the globe but that that simply doesn't make any sense i've not really heard anybody explain how that works <laughs> and uh if the horizon really is dependent on the observer and their elevation in relation to the physical geometry there's only one of those there you only get one horizon on a globe uh, and i have no idea how they explain that second one it, it, they really are not making any sense exactly so when we're now told that that's an apparent horizon but we've also been told it's the horizon that blocks the bottoms of ships it's the thing that we see curve when we go up in altitude. It's the thing that blocks objects at a distance. That's not a geometric horizon. And they're admitting that. That's that's an apparent horizon, one that's not an actual horizon. So there's no reason for that to be blocking anything physically. And and that's the that's the kicker for, for this whole argument that they don't have they are now abandoning their physical geometry of a sphere. And they, I don't think my, most of them know it yet. They haven't really realized. It's the way I'm using this argument is not as a flat earth proof, but more as, as a, a globe killer, because you can formulate it into a logical consistency being modus tollens. Um, were you up to date on modus tollens? Should we go into it? Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I've heard all about it. Yeah. Yep. So for people that haven't heard yet, so the modus tollens argument is if P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. So if P, we live on a globe of radius 39.59 miles, then Q, every geometric physical horizon can be no further than 1.22 times the observer height, the square root of the observer height in feet. And so that puts this black swan image from one foot, like you said before, the horizon should only be 1.22 miles. And even if they argue that maybe it might be five, five foot observer height, it's still 2.77 miles, the geometric horizon. And even if we allow them to beg the question of refraction around the curved Earth, when we put that into their physical Earth curve calculator, which is based on geometry, it still doesn't come out at a value anywhere near where we're seeing that horizon. And so we can finish the Modus Tollens argument by not Q. We are definitely not seeing the horizon at the distance that it needs to be on a geometric sphere so not p we don't live on a sphere and and that's the kicker for them that absolutely gives them an argument for them to destroy their own sphere because it's a logical consistency and when they say no there's something wrong with that well you can say okay so what's wrong with it are you attacking the radius of the globe or are you attacking your horizon and no matter which way they go about it it destroys their globe model it, they're set to fail. And that's what I believe is so beautiful about this argument. Yeah. No, yeah, no, 100%. And um, as freaky as it is, I, I, I kind of wonder, are, are, they good, are, are they just going to start arguing for a flat Earth? That's like within a few years? Within a few years, they're just going to be arguing the Earth is flat, and they're just going to pretend they never said it was a sphere. Just like they, they're like, oh, we never said there's a geometric horizon. Black swan, what are you talking about? We never said <laughs> geometric. Like, they're just going to be, I'm telling you, in five years, our debate opponents are going to be on our side, and we're going to be sitting there in a hangout wondering, why are you? Why are we even debating, dude? You're, you agree the Earth is flat. They're like, shut up. You know, you don't know. <laughs> like, it's just, it's, it's that crazy for these people. The double speak is that ridiculous. The double speak is what's absolutely killing them. Wow. Nathan Oakley is f my fucking favorite right now. I love Nathan Oakley. Yeah, me too. He demolishes Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Oh, man. Nathan Oakley, 1980. Follow his... Uh, he does Flat Earth debates every day. Mm. Live live streams, Flat Earth yeah. debates. Anybody could get on and, uh, you know, and, and debate him. And he just demolishes everybody. I, I, I...